Um, there's a statistic that I heard about a week ago, which is that Canada passed the 40 million people mark, right. which sort of caught me by surprise because the last official number I heard was 38 million. I thought, boy, we sort of skipped over 39 million. And if you look at the stats, Canada, through all kinds of immigration, visitor status, student visas, all together, it's about a million people a year, a million, not 250,000 or 300,000, but a million. That's how we just suddenly jumped up to 40 million people. And, yeah. you know, I know that some of that immigration is entrepreneurial or high skill immigration, but not all of it. The, my initial reflex is, oh, now I know why housing is so expensive. Now I know why traffic is so bad. Now I know why schools are crowded, hospital waiting rooms, there's a lineup. Now I know a lot of those things. But it also hides a weak economy because if you bring a million people into the country every year just to give them housing and food, you're going to get some GDP going up. But if right. if you've increased the population by 3%, but GDP goes up, I don't know, 4%. Well, three of that was just these newcomers, and you actually have a very weak economy. I think that's sort of the point you were making earlier, wasn't it? Exactly. That's the, the, the third point or fourth point that the Bank of Canada, I, I mean, I don't know. I call it gross negligence, uh, Ezra. But the Bank of Canada is now hesitating, dropping the interest rates, even though uh, the the uh, uh, inflation rate is down to 3.4. That was a few days ago. 3.4 percent. You would expect because it's now gone down for 12 consecutive months that there be an ease in the interest rates. Remember, Ezra, it went up 12 consecutive months inflation up to 6 percent before he acted, and it's now dropped 12 consecutive months, and he's not lo lowering these interest rates. <laughs> The answer, if you if you just listen to the fake news media and the Bank of Canada, they're saying, well, we have a strong economy and we got to temper it down. Ezra, the strong economy that they're now saying is 3% GDP. And as you stated, just the number of people coming into Canada is about 3% growth. If we did not have any immigration, or any new people coming into Canada, our economy is dead flat. We're in a recession. It's in trouble. Hmm. And when it's in trouble, you reduce interest rates. So he doesn't even, the Bank of Canada doesn't even net out the extraordinary. There is no country in the world that's adding more people. I had a debate with an American friend, and he did. He said, well, yeah, you're adding one million. We're adding three. I said, we're one-tenth the yeah. size. Yeah. I mean, they don't get it. America thinks they're under siege by open borders and immigration. We, we, we have three times what America brings in, 10 times what my old country, Italy, is bringing in, probably 15 times more than Germany. There's no country in the world that's admitting more people, which is fine. I mean, if that's the direction that Canada wants to go, but at least the Bank of Canada has to take that factor into account and say, look, real growth in Canada, if you net out the new people, is not 3%. Our economy is stagnant. We need to get interest rates down, not up. You know, you said if that's the direction you want to go as a country, I don't think we've ever had a debate on immigration, at least not in the last decade. Um, I think of past conservative leaders, Andrew Scheer, Aaron O'Toole, terrified to even talk about it. Basically, whatever number Justin Trudeau said, they said, yep, we agree. He could, Trudeau, whatever he would say, literally any number, both Andrew Scheer, Aaron O'Toole, and I think Pierre Polyev just say, yeah, whatever he said, they're too afraid to be seen as racist or whatever they would be called for wanting a manageable number of immigration that could be absorbed into the economy and the community. And the number is so astonishingly large, a million people a year in a country of just 40 million people. I have never seen a poll where the people who say more immigration is larger than the people who say less immigration. I mean, it's like single digits who want more. Most people say, yeah, we're okay. A lot of people say it should be less. Angus Reid does this poll all the time. I just don't think we have a national debate on immigration because everyone's terrified of being canceled, Manny. Well, that's true, but we don't even have 
an anal analyzation of the type of immigration. And let me explain it to you. When I immigrated to Canada, uh, five strapping boys uh, came with mom and dad, and we all added to the workforce. And not only that, but we created tons of jobs. That's the type of immigrant that, that, that came to Canada when we came to Canada. There's a way of measuring it, Ezra. Now, and, and, and I've done this as well. I've measured how are we doing as an economy. I already said that our economy is at 0% if you net out the count in, in GDP growth. But in employment, there's, I do not look at the, at the uh, unemployment rate. That's a terrible number. It gives you no information. I look at the um, uh, labor participation rate. Right, and people right. can Google what that is. Now, Ezra, I'm gonna, I've done the math and I've actually posted it. But here's what the labor participation rate is. It's very simple. It is how many working possible working people are there in your country and how many of those are working and you express it as a percentage, okay? So now we know that's an important look, number to look at because we're adding so many people to this country. Mm -hmm. And this tells us what type of people are we adding. Right. If our labor participation rate is going up and we have a million new people in Canada every year, that's a great story. We're going to have a booming economy. We're going to have probably 3% plus 3%. We're going to have 6 7% growth because we should have 6 or 7% growth because we added 3% of the population and we've got these entrepreneurs. But Ezra, I looked at that. Back before, in 2014, mm -hmm. the labor participation rate was about 67%. It's now 65.5%. 1.5% less. That means if you look at to the working people, let's say there are 30 million people uh, in Canada that are of working ability, not that mm -hmm. people that are looking for jobs, mm -hmm. not just that's the problem with the unemployment rate. If I stop looking for a job, I'm not considered a part of the uh, workforce. No, I am, mm -hmm. whether you're starting to look for a job. So 1.5% is 450,000 people. Ezra, that means that since we started this mass immigration, there has been less 450,000 people that are not working in the same percentage as they were before that, before Trudeau expanded it. So the type of immigrants that he's getting are not the entrepreneurs. Of course, there are going to be some, but it's so disproportionate that we are now 450,000 people less working on a percentage basis than we were three years ago. And that's not good. That was an excerpt from the Ezra Levant Show. I'm Ezra Levant. Every weekday I do a monologue about the topic of the day. Then I interview a fascinating guest either in studio or via Skype. And then I read your mail, whether it's fan mail or hate mail, which is sometimes even more interesting. This is on our premium service, though, called Rebel News Plus. Go to rebelnewsplus.com. It's eight bucks a month or less if you buy a whole year in advance. You get my show every weeknight, plus Sheila Gunn Reed's show every week. It's called The Gun Show. It's pretty amazing. You know, we rely on you because we do not take a dime from the government. In Canada, that makes us almost unique. So please help us out and help yourself to some great journalism at rebelnewsplus.com.